Let's start from uh, Oscar Wilde's family tree. His parents were William Robert Wilde and Francesca Speranza LG. William Robert Wilde um, had uh, some problems with justice. In fact, he was sued for raping a girl and he had other illegitimate kids from other women. His mother, Francesca Speranza, was an Irish activist, a poet and a journalist. Actually, when she uh, wrote articles which were published on Irish magazines, uh, she signed uh, with uh, the name Speranza. Her motto was uh, Speranza Fidanza Costanza. Um, Oscar was born in Dublin in 1850. Four and died in Paris in 1900. He studied at uh, Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, then he won a scholarship uh, at uh, Oxford University. And then she moved to London. Uh, while she was in London uh, with uh, her mother, uh, Francesca Speranza, she attended uh, um, a, a literary uh, evening, a literary event, uh, where she met uh, Constance Lloyd. Constance Lloyd was a young girl who was able to uh, read Dante in Italian. This is what fascinated uh, uh, both Oscar and his mother, uh, Francesca. Uh, so they got married. Uh, um, Oscar Wilde said that she fell immediately in love with her. In fact, uh, he said that she wanted to marry her straight away in an hour, uh, in an hour time. Um, they had two kids, Cyril and Vivian. Their marriage was so happy that uh, Oscar and uh, uh, Constance were nicknamed Hamlet and Ophelia. But uh, Oscar secretly met uh, other guys, uh, especially one of them, uh, Robbie Ross. She had uh, a special uh, place in, uh, in Oscar's life. She met him in uh, 1886. Uh, five years later, she met Alfred Douglas, uh, the son of uh, uh, the Marquis of Queensbury. Uh, and uh, they started a love affair. Um, she had trouble with uh, Alfred's uh, father and she had uh, to be sued and tried. After the trial, she was uh, condemned to two years of hard labor and uh, had to spend two years at uh, the Reading Jail. When she was released, uh, uh, she um, went to Rome with uh, Alfred Douglas, uh, but then she died in Paris in 1900. We mentioned uh, uh, Alfred Douglas as uh, the greatest love in uh, Oscar Wilde's life. Let's look at uh, Alfred's uh, family tree. Uh, his father was John Douglas. Uh, um, he belonged to the dynasty of the Marquises of Queensbury. Uh, she, uh, John had uh, uh, three siblings, uh, Francis, and uh, uh, two twin uh, siblings, uh, James and Florence. Uh, James uh, was uh, secretly in love with uh, her twin uh, uh, sister Florence, uh, and in fact, she committed suicide when she got married. Uh, John himself married Sibyl Montgomery. They had four kids uh, Francis, Percy, Gertrude, and Alfred. Um, Francis, uh, uh, the uh, eldest son, uh, um, had uh, a secret relationship with uh, a liberal prime minister, Archibald Primrose, and she uh, went into uh, serious trouble which led to his uh, death. But we will see that before dying, he will uh, um, defend uh, uh, Oscar Wilde in the first trial against uh, um, his father, against John Douglas. Alfred was nicknamed Boise, that is a little boy, which later became Bosey, uh, by uh, his uh, mother, Sibyl. Um, let's note that Sibyl uh, is going to become an important character in uh, uh, the picture of Dorian Gray, the character of Sibyl Vane. 
um, Alfred Douglas met Oscar Wilde in 1891. Um, they soon started a um, sexual um, relationship uh, which made Alfred's father, John, really, really angry. And in fact, John made several attempts to harass, to physically harass Oscar Wilde. There's a famous episode when he went to a theater and he wanted to throw vegetables uh, at uh, Oscar Wilde, but he was stopped by some policemen. Later, he sent him uh, a, a letter which was read uh, in public, which was a public insult, uh, which, um, which said, uh, uh, Oscar Wilde posing as a sodomite. Uh, for this, uh, uh, Alfred Douglas uh, um, convinced uh, Oscar Wilde to sue uh, his father because he really hated his father. In fact, later in De Profundis, uh, Oscar Wilde says that uh, uh, the, the greatest mistake they ever did uh, was, uh, um, that he did, uh, was letting Alfred uh, uh, somehow, um, somehow use Oscar as a weapon against his father. Um, somehow, Alfred Douglas has always been a sort of manipulator. He has always been able to manipulate Oscar Wilde during all his life. Um, the first trial um, caused a second trial for gross indecency because it became manifest that Oscar and Alfred had a sexual relationship which was illegal at that time. This second trial is uh, really um, famous for um, the quotation, the love that dare not speak its name. This quotation is not Wilde's. It is taken, uh, it is taken from a poem, a poem written by uh, Alfred Douglas, uh, that is, Two Loves. In this poem, um, there are two uh, fictional characters. One is uh, the love between a boy and a girl, uh, which is a sort of uh, uh, natural love. So the judge uh, um, so the judge said and defined this kind of love, meaning that a second love between an older man and a younger man was not legal, natural, and it had to be punished. And in fact, uh, um, Oscar Wilde was uh, condemned to two years hard labor, which he spent in uh, the Reading Jail. During these two years, he wrote The Ballad of the Reading Jail and De Profundis, which is a long letter dedicated to Alfred Douglas. Uh, during uh, this uh, uh, period of conviction, uh, his uh, wife, uh, uh, Constance Lloyd, visited him uh, and uh, informed him that he could see his kids, but on one condition, that he should never see Alfred Douglas again, um, which will not happen, because when uh, Wilde was released, uh, um, Oscar and Alfred actually got together, and they went together to Rome. Oscar Wilde was born in Dublin. His parents were highly educated and wealthy, so Oscar was exposed to science, medicine and culture. He married a woman, he had some kids, but his real love was Alfred Douglas, nicknamed Bosey. When their relationship became public, Wilde was sued because in the 19th century, homosexual relationships were illegal. He spent some time in prison. He wrote an essay called De Profundis, which explored several themes, art, the artist's role, genuine talent, the Victorian morality, that he condemned, citing the image of the whited sepulchers used by Jesus Christ. 
He joined the decadent movement. He wrote poems, comedies, and only one novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. He was influenced by Gothic novel, The Theme of the Double, The Fall of the Protagonist, From an Innocent Young Man to a Selfish and Cynical Criminal. In the novel, we also find Faustian features. Dorian says, I would give my soul in order that I could have eternal youth. The opposition between the beauty of the arts and the beauty of real life was explored. The story is set in London, both in the West End and in the East End. Dorian regularly visits both zones, which mirrors his double personality. Dorian Gray is a young aristocratic man of stunning beauty, a painter, Basil Hallward, decided to paint his portrait. When the portrait is complete, Basil shows it to his friend Lord Henry Wotton, a nobleman who belongs to the decadent movement. Henry meets Dorian in Basil's study. Henry exposes to the young man his theories about hedonism the pursuit of pleasure, the rejection of the rigid Victorian values. For Dorian, it is a real epiphany. For the first time, he becomes aware of his beauty, which reminds us of the Greek myth of Narcissus. While she looks at the picture, he claims that he is willing to lose his soul in order to have eternal youth and beauty. Now he starts his downfall from a condition of innocence to one of cynicism and selfishness. He breaks the heart of a ballet dancer, Sibyl Vane, who commits suicide when she dumps her. She indulges in unacceptable actions, but she becomes aware that she never gets old. On the other hand, she notices that the image in the picture becomes older and uglier every time he commits a crime. That drives him crazy. She hides the picture in the most secret room of the palace. She locks the door and when he shows Basil Hallward the horrible transformation of the picture, she stabs him out of rage. In the end, Dorian wants to break the curse which links him to the picture, and using a knife, she tries to destroy it. On the following day, the servants find his dead body while the picture is perfectly intact. Themes, motives, symbols. First, art versus life. Whereas Jekyll's alter ego is Hyde, that is another real man, the double of Dorian is an artwork, a portrait. It is clear that the portrait represents Dorian's soul. This bears the marks of his growing moral corruption. Like in the novel written by Stevenson, when Dorian decides to destroy the portrait, he ends up destroying himself. Dorian Basil Henry Quote Dorian is what I would like to be. Basil is who I think I am. Henry is what the world thinks I am. End quote. This is what Oscar Wilde himself said about Dorian Gray, Basil Hallward and Henry Wotton. Henry Wotton is guilty of exerting a bad influence on a young man. Henry loves hedonism and the decadent lifestyle, but she is not brave enough to live up to it. 
The only thing that she manages to do is turning Dorian into a perfect hedonist, an evil bound character. From master to slave. Firstly, Dorian is convinced that she is the master of his impulses and excesses, but she ends up becoming slave to them. Decadentism, hedonism, beauty, youth. When Henry meets Dorian, he teaches him the principles of hedonism and decadentism. Someday, when you are old and wrinkled and ugly, you will feel it terribly. Now, wherever you go, you charm the world. Beauty is a form of genius. It is higher than genius, as it needs no explanation. But what the gods give, they quickly take away. You have only a few years in which to live really, perfectly and fully. Live. Live the wonderful life that is in you. Let nothing be lost upon you. Be always searching for new sensations. Be afraid of nothing. A new hedonism, this is what our sanctuary wants. You might be its visible symbol. When the picture of Dorian Gray was first published, it was immediately censored because it was considered an immoral book. Oscar Wilde decided to publish it again with a preface. In this preface, she wrote that there is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are either well written or badly written, meaning that um, what Victorians uh, said about art in general was totally wrong. Art doesn't have to be judged according to um, the market value, according to the moral teaching that um, a piece of art, a work of art, gives. Art is useless. Useless means without any function, without any practical or moral use, usage. If you look at a work of art, if you look at a picture, at a statue, at a monument, you don't have to wonder what kind of moral teaching it is giving you. You just have to appreciate the beauty of art, only the beauty. Then, let us remember one thing about Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was a dramatist, he was a playwright, and in fact he wrote a lot of uh, comedies based on the indictment of Victorian hypocrisy and the so-called Victorian compromise, such as An Ideal Husband and The Importance of Being Earnest. Uh, Wilde was a poet. <coughs> For example, he wrote the Ballad of the Red in Jail, in which she described the terrible life, the misery, the miserable condition of all men and women who are convicted in a prison, in jail. She describes how a man was executed for killing his wife. Then, um, in the um, Ballad of the Red in Jail, Wilde mentions uh, how uh, sad uh, it was to walk along the lounge, along the corridor of the prison, meeting other faces, meeting the faces of other men, without saying a word, because if you live in prison, you don't feel like uh,
talking to other people um, you all you feel is misery is solitude uh, is loneliness you you really feel isolated uh, and Uh, you feel a sort of claustrophobia. In fact, uh, Wilde describes the walls of the prison, the walls of the cell. And she says it looks like, it looks as if these walls are going to fall upon me and I will be uh, somehow smashed by these walls falling down. Uh, and time when you are in prison when you are alone uh, isolated from the rest of the world isolated from the ones you love time never passes uh, an hour uh, is uh, one year long one year whose days are very long so we have this effect of uh, a multiplication, of dilatation of time. This is a concept we will find uh, uh, with uh, the French philosopher Henri Bergson, who first introduced the idea of the subjectivity of time. Time doesn't have an objective uh, uh, measurement. For me, if I am happy, One hour flies away. If I'm miserable, one hour looks like eternity. This is going to be an important concept um, uh, created, uh, uh, thought by the French philosopher Henri Bergson. De Profundis is an essay. It is a long letter written by Oscar Wilde to Alfred Douglas, but it can be considered an essay. So uh, Wilde is also an essayist. In De Profundis, uh, Wilde explores such themes as the role of the artist, uh, uh, the Victorian morality and hypocrisy. Uh, De Profundis is an indictment of Victorian hypocrisy. Uh, she mentions Jesus Christ and uh, the image of the whited sepulchers. Um, Victorians were great moralizers, but they had uh, a double life. They were a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, even those ideal husbands uh, uh, secretly had uh, other sexual relationships, uh, they secretly had uh, other love affairs, uh, um, disguising themselves uh, under uh, false, fake names, uh, and in fact... Uh, Another comedy um, written by Wilde is uh, the importance of being earnest. Uh, and we have to, to look at uh, this, uh, this word, this name, earnest. Uh, if it is written without an A, it means uh, earnest, a name, a male name. But if you spell it with an A, it means honest. So it, it means the importance of being honest, the importance of being respectable. According to Victoria morality, all you need is to be respected by other people, no matter what you do in your private life, which reminds us of, of Robert Louis Stevenson and... Uh, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, let's not forget that the respectable scientist, uh, uh, Henry Jekyll, uh, felt it was necessary to split his life uh, as a, a respectable and respected scientist from his dark side, which he isolated as Edward Hyde. Um, as a playwright, Oscar Wilde wrote An Ideal Husband, based on a double life led by a Victorian man who had a wife and some kids, so he was respected as a husband, but 
she secretly had other love affairs than the importance of being earnest. And finally, Salom. Salom um, was uh, considered uh, blasphemous because in this uh, play we find some uh, characters uh, taken from the Bible, uh, Herod, uh, Salom and Yochanan, who truly was uh, John the Baptist. What happens uh, is that uh, um, Wild shows that even in the Bible we can find uh, um, characters who are led, who are guided, driven, Freud would say, driven by sexual impulses and desires. Herod was in love with uh, Salom. Salom was in love with uh, Yochanan, but she never wanted to kiss her, so she asked for his head. And actually, Herod, who was in love with Salom, was happy to uh, execute Yochanan, and he brought her his head. Salom kissed the head of this dead man, for which uh, Herod got really angry and uh, had her killed. A Victorian painter had the idea of publishing some pictures uh, uh, inspired by the, the story of Salom, as uh, narrated by Oscar Wilde. Let's not forget that the story narrated by Oscar Wilde is totally different from what we find in the Bible. These illustrations were considered uh, immoral and uh, um, strongly censored at that time, and the painter also got into trouble for publishing these pictures. <laughs> 